name is Zach Mcella, and the problem student I chose was the lack of time management amongst school students. Zach, take a big step forward. Yeah. Right. Now, this topic originated from when Ms. Havig asked us our what lights you on fire question. And for me personally, it was when groups of people stand in the commons, especially during passing periods, and you're trying to you're, you're trying to fight the crowd to get to where you need to go, and it kind of just gets annoying after a while. Now, I remember thinking to myself, I wonder how many kids are late from actually just standing and talking instead of walking to class. And from that, my topic on time management was created. Now we all know, you or one of your friends is a bad habit of this. For example, you're trying to study, but you keep getting distracted by your texts or other notifications that pop up on your phone. Or you have a paper due at 10 o'clock, procrastination gets the best of you, you know, you don't start till 9.30, you're rushing to get it done, it's a complete disaster. Now, other than losing reliability within yourself and others, Having poor time management skills can actually be more harmful than you'd imagine. One of the leading effects in bad time management is very high stress. Insomnia, obesity, and acne are actually medically proven to be associated with these levels of stress. Going hand in hand, having poor time management is actually directly linked to a decrease in school, perform in school performance amongst students. Now, the two experts I chose for this were, one, my father, Ken Kinsella, and two, Laura Vanderkam. Laura is a professional public speaker, writer, and author on time management. She's even appeared on a 2016 TED Talk titled, How to Gain Control of Your Free Time. And for my dad, he has real life experience with his current job and when he worked three jobs while attending college. Now, fixing the time management problems for all HSC students I know is very ambitious. So first of all, I decided to make more detailed efforts towards myself first. So this is just a collaboration I made with Laura and my dad's suggestions that I applied to my life. One, I figured out my priorities. I didn't finish the little things first, pushing the big project towards the end of its deadline. Two, make lists and break down each topic. Include the steps that it take to finish the activity because tasks may seem easier until you break them down further. Three, I limited distractions. Technology especially, I got rid of my phone, computer, all the notifications that popped up. And three, break down large tasks into manageable pieces. Now, especially for this, this helped. I worked, you know, 20 to 30 minutes straight, took a five to 10 minute break to recuperate myself, and then I started fresh. And then this is what my dad uses for his job. He's always stressed out. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, this is just his list for the week. You know, he's made, um, he's broken down the things he's done, he's check marked, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, I just thought that'd be uh, interesting to add. And now, for other students on more of a larger scale, I've made it easier. Um, I decided to have two small suggestions, both involved in your phone, so you know, everyone has a phone here. Um, you, know, you can use your calendar to identify specific events coming up. You can set up reminders in case of forgetfulness. And you can keep notes to keep track of tests and homework if you don't already write that down. Another one is, just be real with yourself. And use your phone only if it's needed for the assigned project. I would suggest either putting your phone on airplane mode, or if that proves too much, just to leave it in another room. Phones are easily the biggest distraction in a student's life. It keeps you from keeping on time and doing stuff. Thoughts for Zach? Uh, is that what's the current uh, <coughs> kind of loose touch and what schools allow now? So, is everybody allowed to carry a phone at this point? Or is it? You yeah. can't. Okay. Yes. And it can be on or vibration mode or what? What's I, the it current? just depends on the teacher. You know, some teachers are more lenient. You know, you can have your phone out in class. I know Miss Hayden is a little more on the lenient side. And in my math class, you know, if you have it out, my teacher takes it. So, kind of depends. I see. Okay. And they're allowed to ring then? You don't have to have it on the side. Of the um, phone. like I said, it just kind of depends. You know, I have. Um, you know, if it rings. have your phone on loud, like ring, actual make noise loud. Like at school or like? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like at school. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you think it's an unspoken I just think, I think that there's a show there, so like loud. I'm getting like embarrassed. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Is my ringer yeah. yeah. like talking loud? I get embarrassed. It's like an unspoken ringer. I just think that there's like a generational gap in terms of like kids making noise type thing. Okay. Okay, that's all. Thanks. I had a, a daughter with 
she was in college, she was just overwhelmed. She was on her phone, on her iPad or whatever she used in college. And she was just talking about she could never get anything done. Yeah. So you know what I, I told her? I said, take a Saturday morning, let everybody know ahead of time you're turning off everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just take four or five hours and stay away from all electronic equipment. Mm -hmm. And she came back later and said, that was wonderful. <laughs> yeah. It was the greatest. Because uh, I know there's a there's a kind of an unwritten rule, like if somebody sends you a message, you don't send them one back, that's like you're dissing that person. <laughs> you let them know ahead of time, I'm not answering anybody for this period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, she said it worked. So I think that you are onto something here. I think the organization is, is important, whether you're in high school or college, or once you get in the business world, I had a government job where I was a manager. If I hadn't had a wonderful secretary, I would have been drowning all the time. She yeah. really kept me on schedule. So uh, it's it's a skill that if you master this, it will help you the rest of your life. I have two things. Um, I see this every day because I teach eighth graders who have no time management. Um, one, have you looked into, I mean, like your dad keeps obviously a paper planner. Yeah. Um, that is like a lost art. Mm -hmm. I really feel like physically writing something down actually triggers something differently in your brain than typing it. Yeah. Um, have you looked into other types of like paper pencil? I, okay, I'm a almost 30 year old woman, but like girls my age are really, or I guess women, women now. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so i myself girl. Um, are really into these things called bullet journals. Um, like there's all kinds of resources out there. Cause I think everyone, I mean, from high school to 30-somethings to six-year-olds to, you know, everyone is looking for ways to simplify things and to get things done. Um, so have you looked into, like, non-technology related organizations? Um, I've or not technically looked into it, but I personally like physically writing it down. I find that it just, um, it, it reminds me where it just stays in my head if I physically write it down. Okay, I, I would suggest you just look and, like, kind of just Google what bullet journals are. They're mm -hmm. color-coded icon related journals yeah. um, and second um, do you have a way that you're tracking like your progress with your time management um, no I, I did not I didn't track it I thought about doing that um, maybe that's just like the next step is just to start tracking you know um, if I plan ahead of time you know if I can do this and this be on time compared to maybe last week where I didn't do you know XYZ and I was late um, but no you know um, <coughs> Kind of things that I listed up here, I used for this project right here, especially the last one. Um, you know, I worked for a little bit, I took a break, and then I found myself, you know, I was in more of a creative mindset. I was able to come up with um, you know, things that I was stuck on. Okay, just a suggestion if you're going to like try and encourage other people, yeah. kind of document and journal for yourself how your progress is going, and then kind of like he mentioned, like when you have a story to tell about like success with this yeah. that makes people more inclined to want to try something that maybe they hadn't thought would work for them. Um, so just some yeah, thoughts for sure. Thank you. Um, Is that, uh, I thought you had a really good presentation. Um, I like the statistics that you gave. Uh, I like the solutions you had uh, and that they worked for you. Have you thought about how you're going to get this, how you're going to get the word out and the information out to help others? Um, that's why I kind of chose um, the two other um, suggestions I had for other students to maybe make things simpler. I thought um, it hit more home. Just you know, everyone had um, it just made sense for, to do those things. Um, but I, I guess word of mouth would also work in that sense too. You know, see if you know if it's working for me. You know, my friend recognize that. And maybe that applies to their lives and you know, going from there. Yeah, and then uh, I, I like what she was saying about tracking progress. Mm -hmm. um, you want to, I mean, one, everyone should want to have time management, yeah. um, but you have to make it appealing to some people. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if you put it in terms of, hey, I didn't have to miss anything, or I didn't have to skip anything that I wanted to do because I put these projects off and then had to wait till last weekend, so I spent all weekend you know, doing the homework, which I could have spread out over a whole semester, yeah. or nine weeks, however long it was. Mm -hmm. Okay, so kind of to be up what she said, have you ever heard of a Gantt chart? I don't know. Okay, so it's kind of like making a list and breaking it down um, and it's like, it's for one specific project, but you like break down what you're going to do each day and like kind of like that. I don't know, look, I would do some research on that because it's kind of similar to, I think, the second bullet, which is like including steps yeah. to take to finish the activity, but it's a more organized, structured way. So I don't okay. know if you're looking. Yeah. Everybody spell that. G 
Hey Zach, um, you see multiple third. Um, I like that you had a, had a start and then you had an endpoint there. I'm going to ask you, what uh, what's your goal with your project? Um, I don't know. This kind of hit home to me because I have awful organization skills and I'm really bad at being on time. So, um, you know, finding all this stuff and researching it definitely uh, helped me with myself. So. so it's more of a personal enrichment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first is more personal. It's good. A uh, couple couple suggestions on your presentation itself. Mm -hmm. Your intro, you are talking about people waiting in the hallways and yeah. trying to get around them. Yeah. That's the last we heard of that one. Maybe think about a different lead there, something that applies more towards what your actual goal is mm -hmm. with your personal with your personal enrichment. Yeah. So keep the narrative tight and together. Mm -hmm. Because even there, I mean you're introducing a bunch of different topics. Each one of those four points could be a new presentation. Because you're covering a lot of distance there. Yeah. When ultimately what you're really doing in your recommendations Point number four. All right. Yeah. Okay. So keep it focused. Keep it tight. That'll help you organize things. You say you're disorganized. So yeah. when you're out here broad, there's a lot of different ways you can take it. But if you focus in it and keep it narrow, then that's going to help you in the long run. And ultimately, that keeps everybody else on the same page too. That's your percent. Thank you. All right. Any final thoughts for Zach? Uh, Zach, did you any publication as far as uh, called books? You guys, I don't know. We have <laughs> 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 older folks still have books. <laughs> so a couple that I already referred to and I love them is that is one's called the One Minute Manager. I don't know if you ever seen that one. And another one's called Don't Sweat the Small Thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ever seen those. those no, no. Excellent. I've reread them a couple of times. It's it really brings back really the important things in life and how to get over those small bumps that become major roadblocks in your life. Or so. I mean, there are some good resources out there too. I'm sure there. Are electronic media now with those two. But those are a couple titles that come to mind. Perhaps the rest of the panel's got, Larry, you probably got a ton of books on mind that would, yeah, I think you know, you can refer to as far as books. You know, I, I, I graduated doing Kindle. That's how I read my books. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> for, an old guy, for an old guy, that's pretty good. <laughs> good job. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.